Welcome. Today you will learn about the process of assessing evidence from a crime scene in a forensics lab. This simulation is carried out to understand the process of assessing evidence in a forensics lab. Meet Dr. Lisa, the lead forensic scientist. We'll be guiding you today through the process of testing the evidence gathered in the field. Are you ready to start digging through the material and get some answers? You can hold a conversation with the patron by referring and reading from the displayed image. Or, you can click on the displayed image to move ahead and the system will register this as your response. Good to have you. Our objective is to examine the collected evidence from the crime scene and gather information to help identify the perpetrator. Let us get started. Put on gloves, apron and eyeglasses for safely assessing the evidence. It is also important that we don't leave our DNA on the evidence. Assign the evidence bag's unique identification numbers. Take the label and place it on the highlighted area. Take the label and place it on the highlighted area. Take the label and place it on the highlighted area. Take the label and place it on the highlighted area. Good job! It is important to label the bags for further examinations. Well done. Let us analyze the torn piece of fabric for any trace evidence. Get the torn piece of fabric from the evidence bag and place it under the UV light. Here lies the proof that could belong to the culprit or culprits. Hold and apply the adhesive tape to lift any fibers or hair if they are present. Any fibers or hair found will be analyzed for DNA sampling. Excellent job. Now, collect the adhesive tape and properly place it in the highlighted bag, which has been labeled. Hopefully the hair might lead us to the culprit. Excellent. Now, we need to examine the wallet for any latent fingerprints. Get the wallet from the evidence bag and place it under the UV light. Take the brush and apply it on the fingerprint powder. The brush should now be swept over the wallet to reveal any prints. Once done, snap the brush back on the highlighted zone.
Now, take the adhesive tape and place it on the wallet to gently lift the visible fingerprint. It is also interesting to know that fingerprints are unique to each individual. Yet they can be classified into three main classes which you can see in this image. You can also view the fingerprint under a microscope. Fingerprints under a microscope will look something like in this image shown here. Now, collect the adhesive tape and properly place it in the highlighted bag, which has been labeled. Now we can hand this over to the fingerprint analyst who will further process it and look if they can find a match in their database. Now, let us move on to the broken phone. Search for any information or prints. Again, the irony amuses me of being a robber and leaving such a prized possession behind. Get the broken phone from the evidence bag and place it under the UV light. Hold the tweezer and place it on the IMEI sticker to collect it. Remember, it is very important to not harm the sticker as it can lead us to very useful information. Once done, snap the tweezers back on the highlighted zone. Place the IMEI sticker on the transparent sheet. Well done. Now, collect the transparent sheet and properly place it in the highlighted bag, which has been labeled. This valuable piece of evidence will now be handed over to the digital forensics who will find out the owner in his location. Now, let us move on to the shattered glass fragments. We will be searching for any blood or tissue samples. Get the tweezers from the table and collect the shattered glass from the evidence bag. Place the shattered glass in the petri dish and place it under the UV light. Now, with the help of the tweezers collect the glass piece. While holding the tweezers, place the sample on the glass slide. Well done, you have collected enough evidence that with further testing I am sure we will be able to catch the robbers involved. Once done, snap the tweezers back on the highlighted zone. Now, let's grab a swab stick to collect the blood on these highlighted glass pieces so that traces of blood adhere to the swab stick. Place this swab stick on the glass slide next to it.
Next, grab the tweezers and use them to pinch the swab stick, shredding it into smaller pieces. Let's pick a few of these pieces using the tweezer and move towards the Eppendorf stand. Put them in the highlighted microtube or Eppendorf placed on a stand. Now grab the highlighted micropipette and collide it with the highlighted bottle to fill in the lysis solution. The lysis solution contains two important ingredients, detergent and an enzyme called proteinase K. The detergent disrupts the cell membrane and nuclear envelope, causing the cells to burst open and release their DNA. The proteinase K cuts apart the histones to free the DNA. Collide on the highlighted Eppendorf to empty the lysis solution in the Eppendorf and let it sit for some time. This sample will next undergo the process of DNA quantification, amplification and profiling, which will help us in identifying the culprit. We have completed the initial examination. We have extracted hair from the cloth piece, fingerprints from the wallet, IMEI number from the mobile phone and DNA from blood on the glass pieces. We'll send the evidence for further analysis and work on compiling our findings into a comprehensive report. Your attention to detail will be crucial in solving this case. This simulation was to provide preliminary exposure for assessing evidence gathered from a robbery scene at a bakery from the perspective of a forensics lab assistant. Hope you have been able to achieve the purpose of this simulation. Feel free to go through the experience again or go back to the home page and try a different experience.